In February 1962, a week after John Glenn orbited Earth, and two months before the opening of the Century 21 Exposition, aka the Seattle World's Fair, the Seattle Post Intelligencer featured a mysterious photo in its Sunday magazine. Discovered in the archives of a pioneer photo studio, it depicted a familiar, if antiquated, Seattle cityscape, but with a futuristic alteration. Skillfully added to the original photo, painted ribbons of monorail track snaked down 4th Avenue and through Westlake, while cars atop the tracks bore a logo, Universal Elevated Railway. Even keen-witted 93-year-old Joshua Green, from whose eponymous building the portrait had been taken, had no recollection of its provenance. Challenged to solve the enigma, however, older readers soon supplied answers. A retired patent attorney recalled filing the original designs in 1918, and several early investors trotted out their now worthless stock certificates. Turns out the city's nearly completed all-weg monorail, set to glide between Westlake and the World's Fair, had been largely envisioned more than 40 years earlier by prescient inventors and entrepreneurs. Uncannily, one of their proposed routes even mirrored that of the Allweg. This early monorail design was the brainchild of an unlikely crew, including noted physician Dr. Royal McClure, wealthy Cedro Woolley druggist Albert Holland, Capitol Hill garage manager David McClay, and Seattle engineering professor Robert Rockwell. In May 1917, they incorporated as the Universal Elevated Railway Co. and declared their intention to make Seattle the world's monorail capital. By late 1918, after filing more than a dozen patents, the partners offered stock in the company intended to fund a demonstration monorail downtown. Surely the world would soon beat a single-track path to their door. A bold-faced promotional flyer touted the advantages of elevated transit systems. Surface obstruction, such as floods, snow, railroad crossings, congestion, derailing, and third rail danger, largely would be eliminated by their innovative designs, intended to replace nearly 200 miles of perilous existing railway on Seattle streets. Yet it was not to be. In the final year of World War I, the federal government imposed austerity measures across the nation, discouraging unnecessary capital investments. To boot, Seattle Mayor Ole Hansen was a decided skeptic. The gung-ho backers of the Universal Elevated Railway, though rich in imagination and ambition, could not raise enough out-of-pocket cash. In 1923, the struggling company closed its doors. In our first then photo, this Webster and Stevens photograph looking north from the third floor of the 1913 Joshua Green building includes futuristic features added by an unknown designer. Imagined monorails snugly hug both sides of 90-foot wide Westlake Avenue. The track veering left past the Hotel Plaza heads up 4th Avenue towards today's Seattle Center. In our second then photo, a second proposed route of the Universal Elevated Railway runs south along 2nd Avenue from Stewart. The new logo on the foreground train's side panel suggests a rechristened Safety Railroad. In our first now photo, today's Westlake Park popularly known as Seattle's Town Square, replaced Westlake Avenue in 1960. Surviving structures include the 10-floor Seaboard Building, 1909, at far right, the former American Hotel from 1907, now Westlake Place, is to its immediate north. In our second now photo, while much of 2nd Avenue is now composed of glass and steel towers, original structures remain. The remodeled Standard Furniture Company building from 1907 still looms at right. 
On the southwest corner of Second and Pine, the Doyle Building from 1919 is a terracotta-faced marvel.